Day three of the Colt starting clinic was another sweltering August day in Texas. Coming off the horses first saddling the day before, participants were eager to meet with professional clinician Jeff Davis in the morning. The day got started with a classroom session, where Jeff recapped the importance of the first saddling and discussed his plans for the day ahead. Okay, good morning guys. How are we doing this morning? Good, good. So let's talk a little bit about yesterday. Let's talk about how the first saddling went. Big day for the Colts. Okay, this is a, they're kind of some milestone days. That's, a, that's the first one. The rest of it is a lot of fundamentals, isn't it? Preparing the Colts, getting them quiet, getting them respectful, using the thinking side of their brain. A lot of the things that we're gonna be covering from now forward are more Colts starting specific things, you know what I mean? So. I felt like for the most part, all the Colts did pretty well. You know, we had some Colts bucking the round pin, but just to be clear, if the horse goes off violently with the saddle and bucks around the round pin and chases you around the round pin, or it walks off like an angel, it literally means nothing, okay? Like the, you know, the, the little red Colt yesterday of Dakotas. That doesn't bother me even in the slightest. In the moment, it's not super, super fun, but it doesn't bother me like that's, oh man, that's a rank Colt. No, you just need to stay on top of it and make sure that the next day that he, you don't let him get in the habit of bucking, that could turn into a habit pretty fast, couldn't it? You know, it's, it's sensitive enough, it's cinchy enough that you could let a horse like that get into a bucking habit just like that, okay? So the goal today is, from, and, and every day after this, is to prepare the colts well enough that they don't buck with the saddle. That's my goal. What do I gotta do? How much groundwork does the colt need that when I go to saddle him, he doesn't want to buck with the saddle, or if he does, I've got enough control over him that I can get him to stop bucking. Because you do not want this to become a habit. We've all seen, you know, 15 year old geldings that are still bucking with the saddle. Every time you saddle them, you got to go let them buck it out for 30 seconds and you can get on them and they won't do anything, okay? Now, I'm not saying that's not manageable. You can deal with that. Lots of people deal with it. Some of the, you, you guys might be some of those people uh, but I would prefer that not to start. I don't want the horses coming out every day thinking that they kind of get to blow off steam. As soon as I tighten up the stanch, they've got five, 10 minutes just to do whatever they want. More and more, the more I, I work a horse, I want them to come out with more of that workman's kind of mentality. That sort of, all right, it's game time. Let's get to work. Okay, when I put the halter on, done playing around. Now don't take that out of context. I'm not saying that I want the Colts miserable and I want them to come out and hate life or anything like that. That's not what I'm saying. But what I am saying is I need them to know it's your job to behave, okay? It's your job that when, if I go to put my little old grandmother on you or I have to get on you, it's your job to behave yourself. So no, you can't come out here. You know, when I, when I send a horse home, you know, that's what we're, especially this year, we've been doing the majority of is training horses because of the COVID situation, we've been staying home quite a bit. When I send those horses home, I'm not riding them anymore. I'm not worried about them being a little tight with the saddle or something like that. That doesn't intimidate me. It doesn't intimidate me that maybe they want to kind of play around when I first get around on them, okay? But it might intimidate the 65-year-old lady that owns the horse, okay? She just retired, just got her first horse, hadn't ridden a horse in 40 years. This is the first horse back. It needs to behave itself, okay? What am I supposed to tell that lady? What am I supposed to, well, here's the thing. If you, if you go out there and you lunge him down real hard for 30 minutes, when you get on him, he's only gonna hump three or four times. He'll spin left, spin right. And if you kick him in the gut just right, he'll trot off. That's not gonna get it. You know what I mean? That's not gonna work. She can't, she's not a horse trainer. That's why she sent the horse to us to work with. Hey, can you get this nonsense out of him before I have to do it, okay? With any luck, I can kind of get it under control. And when I hand it back, hey, here's a few things you need to have to do. Don't overfeed him and underwork him. Make sure that you're working him consistently and you guys should get along great, okay? That's how I want the Colts to get more and more every day. Now again, they resaddled really good yesterday, but you heard me say multiple, multiple times, do not trust them, they are not broke yet, okay? Just because they're a little tired and they're a little sweaty and they've been out in the sun all day and they're kind of, oh my God, I hate this. I thought this was a one day clinic. Why couldn't we just go home yesterday? Okay, why do we have to get to this part of the clinic? 
doesn't mean they're broke yet. When they come out this morning and we resaddle, they're gonna be more fresh. So some of them might wanna to wanna to get tight and buck a little with that saddle. So we need to get on top of that quickly. So we're gonna keep adding things every day, obviously. We need to add the hackamores today and show you, we get them flexing with the hackamores. We're gonna add some stirrup driving, get them more desensitized to that flapping of the stirrup while they're actually moving around. So we got more exercises to add every day. We, we're gonna touch on this more today and, and I'm gonna nag you guys again for another eight days about this. When you're saddling, we're kind of trying to keep this thing as a big group. So we were kind of, you know, if it sounds like I'm rushing you along, I kind of am. You know, I need you to be smooth, but I don't need you to kind of dilly-dally around, so to speak. So when you're, when you're saddling those horses, you're trying to kind of keep it up as a class. And I, here's, I'll tell you why. It's not that big of a deal for your horse, but here's what happens. You, let's say you're way ahead of the class. Your horse is saddled. Okay, cool, my horse is ready to lunge off. And you start lunging your horse off and he breaks into a bucking fit, and then it crashes into Kale's colt, and Kale doesn't even have the cinch done up yet. So his goes off wild bucking and starts dragging the saddle around. And that one runs into this one, and it's like a domino effect. Next thing you know, the entire arena is either getting run over, horses are getting loose, horses are running between people's lead ropes, okay? People are cussing, kids are crying. It's a disaster at that point. And at that point, if you're me, you just, I don't know what to tell you, okay? Just get them caught and let's start all over and pretend this nightmare never happened. So I'm kind of trying to keep everybody on the same page. Not only that, it's only their second saddling, okay? Remember I told you in the round pin, time is of the essence, okay? Once you, especially once you take the first wrap on the cinch and you're actually starting to cinch it down like you're gonna tighten the saddle and get on, time is very much of the essence. Meaning it's only a matter of time before that colt kind of moves and, oh hell, I'm cinched up, you know what I mean? And he gets a completely different feeling and he moves and it kind of pulls on the other side of the saddle and blows up right beside you, okay? Don't think for a second, if your colt trotted off great yesterday, lucky you, but that doesn't mean he won't buck today. I've seen lots and lots of horses that never haven't bucked at all during this clinic and they'll buck on the last day. You'll put the saddle on a little bit and they'll be a little tight with it, okay? So you can't, in this 10 days, you really can't let your guard down, so to speak. You really got to keep your head screwed on and be thinking about what could potentially happen. Uh, but by and large, I felt like for the most part, everybody did really well yesterday. I, uh, you know, we don't have a lot, of, a lot of problem children. There's a few horses that we need to kind of stay on top of, you know, that we, we got them coming around, but we need to make sure that doesn't go backwards because that could go backwards in a hurry. But I felt like for the most part, they did really well. And I thought you guys did really well in the second half of the clinic as well. Today, coming out, like I said, we need to introduce the hackamores to the colts. Even though we're using a rope hackamore, it does have a different feel for the horses than the halter, so you want to make sure that we get them flexing really well with that. We're going to get a little pickier about our flexing, a little pickier about our lunging. We need to kind of just step them up a little bit now, okay? Every day, we're just going to ask a little bit more, a little bit more out of them. We're not going to have the colts. We're not going to turn them out with a saddle or anything like that. Yesterday, you know, that's kind of the big day where you, you know, they're saddled all day long for the most part. If it was our horses, to be honest, it turned out longer than that. You know, if I saddle at seven o'clock in the morning, you know, I could probably have four colts saddled, you know, hour, hour and a half, and then they're turned out all day. So they're turned out even longer than that. But I felt like for the most part, we got the horses moving around where nothing was still bucking, nothing's wanting to have a heart attack about anything. Most of them were kind of coming through it reasonably well. So we, you know, you don't have to leave them saddled for 12 hours or anything like that, but you know, it went pretty smooth otherwise. We got a lot of new things to cover. I'm gonna kind of introduce you guys to some different exercises you can do uh, to desensitize the colts to you up above their eye line a little. You know, it's a bit of like a, what we call maybe like a city slickers version of the first ride. Um, if you got the time, it never hurts, okay? It's a, little bit, it's a little bit safer, it's a little bit easier to get done. And, and again, it's good for the colts. Any questions about anything that we covered yesterday? Crickets. Any, any questions about anything we talked about this morning? Your colts? Anybody having any trouble down at the runs? Anything not working? RV spots working? Anybody's back sore? Anything you want to talk about? <laughs> Nothing? Okay, good deal. So here's what we're going to do. Uh, if your saddle's not on the fence, we'll go ahead and need to get your saddle out there on the fence with your uh, pad. Go ahead and bring your hackamores with you, and we'll just hang them over the saddle horn. Uh, and then we'll go grab your colts, you need your halter and lead rope stick and string, and we'll meet you in the arena. My name is Shannon Buchanan, 
and I took my colt Desi to the colt starting clinic at the Down Under Horsemanship Ranch in Stevensville, Texas. We chose to go to the uh, clinic because I wanted to make sure she had the very best start and I felt like that the only way to do that was to start her with the method. When everyone was gathered in the big outdoor arena with their colts, Jeff got them busy reviewing groundwork exercises. After the class had gotten their horses moving their feet and using the thinking side of their brains, they introduced the helicopter exercise to them. Working with participant Jacqueline's horse, Jeff demonstrated the fundamentals desensitizing exercise to the class. The goal of the exercise is to be able to swing the stick and string up and over the horse's body with high energy so that it makes a loud noise while the horse stands completely still and relaxed. To achieve the helicopter motion, you need to hold your arm as straight as possible as you swing the stick and string up and over the horse's hindquarters, back and neck, and then back down to the ground. Many horses will accept an object as long as it's at their eye level or below. When an object gets above their eye level, especially if it moves and makes a noise, most horses will get nervous. That's why the helicopter exercise is beneficial to practice before you ride a horse for the first time. Eventually, you'll be sitting up on his back and you want him to be comfortable with noise and movement above him. For day three, we went ahead and added a few extra desensitizing exercises to help prepare the colts for, for the first ride. One of those exercises is called the helicopter exercise. Basically what this is trying what we're trying to accomplish here is we're trying to get the colts comfortable with something moving and making a noise more up above their back and their ears, okay? When you spank the ground, you're really spanking the ground more beside the horses, not really over top of their head for the most part. So the helicopter exercise, my goal there is to be able to swing that stick in, in, in reverse of the way you would spank the ground, but more at a 45 degree angle. So you're kind of coming down low from the ground and then up over the horse's, uh, his neck and his head. So that really kind of makes a whistling sound past his ears. A lot of horses don't like that. A lot of horses will overreact to that initially. And it's good, we're that's what we're looking for. You know, I've, you, you will hear me say to the participants a lot, you need to be a detective for this sort of thing. You need to go right out of your way to try to find any sort of, oh no, don't touch me there, I don't like that kind of spots, okay? So the helicopter exercise is a really good exercise to help prepare them for that movement and that noise that's gonna be happening up above their head when we go to ride them. Want more? Get more. The No Worries Club is the best way to get the most out of your training experience. Stick around to find out more. Hey mate, Clint Anderson here. For the past 20 years, I've devoted my life to creating the best training tools and videos available to help bring my method to you. But there's only one problem. You can't bring your TV into the arena. <laughs> That's why we've been hard at work developing a new platform to deliver the method to you in a whole new way. A way that brings 20 years of horsemanship and puts it in the palm of your hand. Introducing the mobile method. It's part of the new Down Under digital experience and it makes learning the method easier than ever before. Let me show you how it works, mate. Now you can always have access to the method, even when you're on the go or at the barn. The Down Under Horsemanship app gives you access to your digital training kits and allows you to download videos and training content directly to your mobile device or view them on your computer. The Down Under Horsemanship app also offers over 86 hours of free in-depth training content. No worries, club members will have full access to Clinton's ever-growing training library and a massive amount of members-only features and information. And the best part is, you can view and interact with each lesson on your mobile device or computer, giving you ultimate access to the method anytime and any place. The method is the key to getting the most out of your partnership with your horse. We want everybody to experience the difference it will make. 
That's why we've created three new ways for you to get the training content you need at the price you want. Our basic level allows you to purchase and download training content to your device at our standard price with no annual fee. When you become a No Worries Club member for $19.99 a month, you get up to 50% discount on any of your purchases. Plus, you get eight digital videos and four digital journals a year and access to the No Worries Club website, the largest collection of method material and resources in the world. Plus, you can become part of our social network and chat with thousands of other folks just like you. If you want the ultimate experience, mate, the premium membership is for you. You get all the benefits of the No Worries Club, a printed copy of our No Worries Club quarterly journal, and access to all of the method and the professional series kit training videos. Altogether, that's thousands of dollars of horse training and 20 years of horsemanship delivered right to your fingertips. So there you have it, folks. The new mobile method app is the easiest and most effective way to deliver the maximum amount of knowledge at a minimal amount of time. And with the new No Worries Club, you can be assured you're gonna get exactly what you need at a price that's right for you. It's a free download, so what are you waiting for, mate? Get started today. Start your digital training experience today. Visit our website and download the Down Under Horsemanship app to experience the method in a whole new way.